Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Thousands march for the homeland in Bolivia. Negotiations on 2015 nuclear deal resume in Vienna. Clover workers strike against retrenchments in South Africa. And Amazon workers in Alabama granted new union election. In our first story, we go to Bolivia, where the March for the Homeland was concluded in La Paz on November 29th. Thousands of Bolivians walked to the capital in defense of democracy and the socialist government of Luis Arce. Led by the Pact of Unity and the Bolivian Workers' Center, the 180-kilometer march began in the Oruru department on November 23rd. Indigenous organizations, unions and other groups associated with the movement towards socialism participated in the action. Former President Evo Morales presided over the march, adding that it was for justice against right-wing attempts to restore the colonial state. Aside from the inclusive economic policy, the RSA government is taking major steps to ensure justice for those massacred during the 2019 coup. Meanwhile, far-right civic committees have been organizing a series of blockades and protests. Instances of anti-indigenous racism and violence have been reported during these actions, similar to what was documented during the coup. These blockades have been rejected as a second coup and an attempt to destabilize the government. The March for the Homeland was the latest in a series of mass mobilizations against such right-wing actions. President Arce also joined the march on Saturday emphasizing unity and rejecting the intrusion of foreign interests in Bolivia. After the march reached La Paz on Monday, tens of thousands of people gathered in the Plaza San Francisco for a rally. Talks to restore the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action or the 2015 nuclear deal have resumed this week. Officials from Iran, China, Russia, France, Germany and the UK arrived in Vienna on November 29th. The seventh round of negotiations have begun after a five-month break as Iran held its elections. While a U.S. delegation is present in Vienna, it is not participating in the formal talks. Iran has also stated that it will not hold direct bilateral negotiations with the United States. However, Russian and EU officials stated that the talks on Monday had been successful. The Working Group on Sanctions will hold a meeting on November 30th, while a Working Group on Nuclear Issues is set to meet on Wednesday. Iran has already said that it will not discuss these issues as they were resolved via the JCPO. The United States withdrew from the deal in 2018 and proceeded to impose unilateral sanctions on Iran. Citing non-compliance by other parties, Iran has rolled back its commitments under the deal, including limits on uranium enrichment. It has maintained that the US and the European Union must revoke all sanctions imposed after 2017 through a verifiable process. Iran's top negotiator, Ali Bagheri Kani, has also stated that the US and its allies must promise that no new sanctions are imposed in the future. He reportedly also spoke about the guarantees of non-withdrawal from the JCPO and not using its provisions against members. We now go to South Africa, where over 5,000 workers at the largest dairy producer have been on strike for over a week. Workers at the Clover Company walked out on November 22nd to protest planned retrenchments and restructuring. The strike has been organized by the General Industrial Workers Union of South Africa and the Food and Allied Workers Union. Workers are demanding that the government take over Clover and run it with the democratic participation. The company was taken over by the Milko Consortium led by the Israeli Central Bottling Company, CBC, in 2019. Workers' unions have demanded CBC's disinvestment from South Africa. They have pointed to the company's operations in the occupied Palestinian territories and its complicity in the oppression of the Palestinian people. Unions have also argued that Clover has launched a multi-pronged onslaught on workers' rights since 2019. 
The company is planning to retrench 350 workers and close down four branches, affecting another 300 people. This is in addition to over 800 workers who already left the company via voluntary severance packages. Clover is also moving its facilities to mega cities like Durban, where workers cannot afford rent. Another 812 people are set to lose their jobs in one such planned move to Boxburg in February 2022. At the same time, the company is forcing workers to accept a 4.5% wage hike, which is below the inflation rate. It is also imposing 12-hour shifts and expanding working week from five to six days. Workers' unions are demanding a 10% wage increase and a withdrawal of these measures. And for our final story, we go to the United States, where workers at the Amazon warehouse in Alabama have been granted a new union election. Over 3,200 workers at the BHM1 facility in Bessemer had first cast their ballots in February and March. If the vote passed, they would become a part of the Retail, Wholesale and Department Store Union or the RWDSU. This would make BHM1 the first unionized Amazon facility in the United States. However, the action failed after 738 workers voted in favor, while 1,798 voted against. The RWDSU filed appeals citing anti-union propaganda and surveillance of ballot boxes by Amazon. A major issue raised was the mailbox, which was installed right outside the exit gates of Bessemer Warehouse. The union stated that this gave the impression that Amazon would be involved in counting the ballots. The National Labor Relations Board review found that this on-site placement was the unilateral decision of Amazon. The report said that the company's actions destroyed the laboratory conditions for the election. The board's hearing officer recommended in August that another vote should be held. The NLRB's regional director authorized a second election in a ruling on November 29th. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.